Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. The Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, the Honorable Kathy Dunderdale. Ladies and gentlemen, their honors, the Honorable Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador and Mrs. Jane Furneaux Crosby. Please be seated. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jennifer Crummy, Director of Protocol and Corporate Affairs. I will be your Master of Ceremonies this morning. On behalf of their honors and the Premier, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this investiture to recognize recipients of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. The ceremony will commence with an address by His Honor. Ladies and gentlemen, his Honor, the Honorable Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador, and Chancellor of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, Madam Premier, uh, members of the House of Assembly and Ministers, and ladies and gentlemen, this is at this uh, hour in the morning, I'm not in a great mood for making addresses. So, so, and I uh, hope to be commendably brief. I just want to say a few words about the order of uh, Newfoundland and Labrador. I think everyone here understands pretty well what it's uh, about. But to, just to make sure that that's the case, there is a very good note I've been given. It's the highest honor of this province, of course, and its object is to recognize individuals who demonstrated excellence and achievement in any field of endeavor, benefiting in an outstanding manner Newfoundland and Labrador and its residents. And the first of such investiture of the holders of this honor took place in 2004. And there are, um, there, there are at least eight persons uh, who are chosen each year to, to be recognized for the, the wonderful things they've done for the province or for their community or are for uh, charitable activities and the like in, in the province. Now there is a, there's one exception. Uh, there, there are a small group of people who can't uh, get the, uh, the, the order of Newfoundland and Labrador. And of course, that exception is the scallywags who are public officials. <laughs> Members of the Senate or the House of Commons. Uh, or of a province or judges. <laughs> These people are not eligible because they, they are suspicious from the fact that they occupy <laughs> these positions. But when they're no longer in, in the holding those positions, of course, they're eligible <coughs> to be recognized uh, for their outstanding service as well. So ba basically, the, this is for people who are not uh, uh, otherwise in public uh, in public positions. Uh, persons, uh, posthumous nominations are not accepted. Now that has nothing to do with humor. The <laughs> posthumous nominations are, are, you're eliminated if you're already deceased. So you're not eligible if you're a deceased person. Now um, I think that uh, there might be some exceptions made to that by some posthumous people who were, who were so uh, fitted the categories uh, during their life that they might be considered. <coughs> and uh, in addition, there are, you don't have to be a Newfoundlander, generally speaking. You have to be uh, uh, somebody who's lived for a considerable length of time in the province of Newfoundland. You don't necessarily have to be born there, uh, born here in Newfoundland. and. Uh, but you, uh, you're somebody who has lived here for a considerable period of time, uh, are also eligible. Uh, the pe members of the order are also entitled 
to have after their names the initials O-N-L, Order of Newfoundland Labrador, after their names. The medal is a very marvelous piece of work. I have one around my neck at the moment. It's a, it's a bit heavy, but it's made of Labrador. It's a very, very handsome uh, medal that you're entitled to wear on formal occasions, or I suppose you want to wear them around your neck 24 hours a day, you can. <laughs> you may get a crick in your neck, however, be, because it is quite, quite heavy. But it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful looking thing. Uh, and the uh, recommendations as to who should receive this are made by a Newfoundland and Labrador Advisory Council. For example, I, I have no part in that. There's a, a, a council of people who consider every year uh, those who should, they think should be uh, nominated for this recognition, and they meet, and uh, up to eight, uh, the rule is that there's that they should nominate at least eight people every year, men and women, uh, to the order after considering all nominations received. And anyone that's entitled to, to nominate and give the reasons for nominating candidates. And then the night before last night, we, we had a dinner here with uh, the, the nominees who were here this morning, going to be admitted into the order this morning. We had a wonderful dinner, I think, and went very well. A number of them spoke, um, and anybody, any one of them who wished to get up and speak uh, uh, had um, that opportunity, and we had a grand, uh, I think, it's, uh, I'm not immodest in saying that we had a very enjoyable dinner last night, and that everybody got on well, and it's obvious, of course, that these are eight, eight fine people, and you'll hear them described in their major activities will be described as we proceed to see that they get their medals. So um, that's all I'm going to say this morning, except to welcome you all to Government House and to uh, welcome again the eight nominees who are going to join the order. And uh, the Order of Canada, I guess it's uh, for all of Canada, but in my opinion, the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador is more prestigious. So thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Janet Elizabeth Cox. A registered nurse and certified midwife, Janet Elizabeth Cox first came from England in 1970 to work at the Charles S. Curtis Memorial Hospital in St. Anthony. She began her nursing career in this province as a staff nurse and midwife on the obstetrical unit and later went on to attain diplomas in outport nursing and public health nursing from Dalhousie University in Nova Scotia. She later served in various capacities throughout the Labrador Grenfell catchment area, as well as the lower North Shore of Quebec. During these years, Ms. Cox lived in small, very isolated coastal communities where she provided the only <coughs> frontline healthcare presence. Over the course of her service in these communities, she came to realize the very great impact that specific types of cancer were having on certain families. Her relationship with the families, her detective work, and her careful research and documentation of their medical histories led Ms. Cox to conclude that there was a genetic cause um, to the high incidence and premature mortality from colon cancer, hereditary non-polyposis colon cancer. Members of family with this genetic cause are at risk of developing not only colon cancer at a young age, but also many other types of cancers. In consultation with Dr. William Fitzgerald, she set about introducing screening programs for those at highest risk. This resulted in the discovery and surgical removal of many cancers at an early, even precancerous stage. 
what started as a registry of cases documented on index cards filed in shoeboxes has evolved into a computer-based program. Ms. Cox's leadership in moving such studies from the realm of clinical research to practical clinical care has had a profound impact on the lives of countless patients and their families. Ms. Cox was not only instrumental in establishing this life-saving screening program, but she takes an active role in the day-to-day -day administration of the program. She arranges client appointments, accommodation, diagnostic studies, and even social entertainment for those traveling to St. Anthony. She goes above and beyond to get to know every patient, and today, more than 700 individuals are involved in the screening program. Her patients and the community she serves continue to receive high quality clinical and genetic services. The model that she developed of providing comprehensive and fully integrated family-based services was the basis for the 2010 introduction of a similar program province-wide. Janet Cox is a caring, compassionate, professional, and a team player with a winning personality. She takes pride in her calling and is a strong advocate for the interests and well-being of each of her patients. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Janet Elizabeth Cox. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Tom Daw. Tom Daw was born in Long Pond Manuals, Conception Bay, Newfoundland and Labrador. He is a well-known poet, has been a high school English teacher, a professor of English at Memorial University, a visual artist, and a writer. His written work includes fiction, dramatic script, poetry, folklore, and children's literature. He was most recently invested into the Order of Canada. Mr. Dodd has had immeasurable impact on the arts community of this province and around the world. He has published seven books of poetry, three Newfoundland, Newfoundland and Labrador folk alphabets, and two volumes of short stories. His work has also appeared in numerous magazines, journals, and anthologies around the world. Mr. Da's work has been studied in schools, colleges, and universities, written about in reviews, articles, and dissertations. In 2002, Martina Seifert's comprehensive book, Rewriting Newfoundland Mythology, the works of Tom Daw, was published in Germany and the United States. He has also been the subject of a film in the television series, Canadian Literature, produced by the Alberta Educational Communications Corporation. A mentor and source of inspiration, Mr. Daw has given local writers a voice and an avenue to publish their work. In the 70s, he was one of the original founders of Breakwater Books, one of the founding editors of Tickle Ace magazine, and the prose editor of The Livier, a folklore journal. He has also worked on Scrunchins, a creative writing journal of Memorial University of Newfoundland. Mr. Daw's work, including his poetry, short story, drama, drawing, oil painting, and watercolor, have been honored with numerous prestigious awards and prizes. He has twice been nominated to be Canada's Poet Laureate. In 1999, 
He was awarded the Newfoundland and Labrador Arts Council Arts Achievement Award. In 2007, he was elected to the Arts Hall of Fame, as well as awarded a Writers Alliance of Newfoundland and Labrador Lifetime Membership Award. With his work generating a high level of interest here, nationally and internationally, Tom Daw has been called one of our greatest poets ever. Newfoundland and Labrador's most authentic voice and a great cultural ambassador. In the eloquent words of renowned Newfoundland and Labrador artist Christopher Pratt, no one has understood and made relevant the essence and substance of Newfoundland and being a Newfoundlander with greater insight. His poetry is subtle and eloquent. It is profound and at the same time accessible and entertaining. It identifies the universal in the everyday, which has given his writing and carried his sensitivity of the Newfoundland experiences to audiences well beyond our shores. Tom is of this place and of a fascinating generation of people who still remember firsthand where we have come from. He is a truly great and inspirational Newfoundlander. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Tom Daw. Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Frida Gabrielle Thauer. A lifelong resident of Corner Brook, Frida Thauer is a dedicated and inspiring community leader whose impact on our province crosses the sectors of education, music and arts, municipal politics, and family living. Mrs. Fowler is acknowledged as a leader in the field of municipal affairs, community well-being, and results-based environmental issues and concerns. As a municipal councillor, she was responsible for contributing to decisions of council on a variety of issues and concerns to residents. She coordinated solutions for traffic control in the city and represented Cornerbrook on many regional committees including the Great Humber Joint Council and the uh, Newfoundland and Labrador Federation of Municipalities. Further, she presented briefs to the CRTC hearings in Ottawa in support of CBC programming in Western Newfoundland. While her municipal contributions were immense, it is her role as champion of the environment for which she is best known. As founder of the most successful environment-based organization in Western Newfoundland, the Humber Arm Environment Association, Inc., Mrs. Bauer hired staff and coordinated activities and initiatives on a volunteer basis. She made sewage treatment issues top of mind. She managed the 15-person board, invited stakeholder groups, industry, government recreational groups, and municipal leaders together and use her outstanding manner and diplomacy to build partnerships. In 1997, her organization published the first comprehensive environmental management plan for Humber Arm Bay of Islands. Today, the organization's initiative, Trading Books, Trading Books for Boats, is one of the greatest contributors to education in the region. Because of her intuitive nature and leadership, Many environmental programs were introduced into schools, industry organizations, and the community. The Frida Fowler Environmental Scholarship was recently established in her honor for university students pursuing careers in environmental studies. In addition to her immense contributions to the area, 
through her role as municipal councilor and an environmental steward. Mrs. Fowler has been a valuable asset to the area through her vast volunteerism. She has dedicated her time to various candidate committees, the Telethon for Ethiopian Disaster, the Western Healthcare Corporation, the Canadian Red Cross, the Salvation Army, the Bay of Islands Musical Arts, the Canadian Organization for Development and Peace, and she is current president of the Scottish Heritage Society of Western Newfoundland. Frida Fowler's dedication to Newfoundland and Labrador has always been evident in her personal and professional life. Not only has she held the highest positions within her community, but she has done so while building and nurturing a wonderful marriage of over 60 years, raising successful and beautiful children, and running a prosperous family business. To receive the order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Frida Gabrielle Fowler. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, John C. Ford. John, or Jack Ford, was born in Portobasque on March 25, 1990, the son of Captain John and Julia Ford. Following completion of his education, in 1936, he went to work with the Newfoundland Railway as an apprentice machinist. In 1940, he volunteered for military service in World War II. He enrolled in the Royal Air Force and did basic training in England. He was then assigned to Selatar RAF base in Singapore. While at Selatar, war broke out in the Pacific and Jack Ford was captured and taken prisoner. He was kept at the infamous Shanghai prisoner of war camp at Singapore before being sent to Camp Fukuoka No. 2 in Nagasaki. There he worked as a slave laborer in the nearby Mitsubishi shipyard for the duration of the year. Not only did Mr. Ford survive the atrocities of being a prisoner of war, but he was also first-hand witness to the horror and devastation of the world's first atomic weapons. When the war ended, the Japanese prisoner of wars were released and Mr. Ford returned to England, where in 1946, he was discharged from the RAF. He returned to his home in Port of Asque and resumed his employment with the Newfoundland Railway. He married Margaret Payne, had one son, two grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. Jack Ford's riveting story of how he survived the war and his long journey home is told in The Jack Ford Story, Newfoundland's POW in Nagasaki. Recognized around the world as a powerful recounting of the atrocities of war, his story has been featured in many Canadian newspapers and radio, has been a feature of the well-known series Front Page Challenge, and a CBC documentary, Return to Nagasaki. Those who hear his story are left with a greater appreciation for the hardships our veterans experienced and continue to experience, and a sense of pride in the heroism and courage shown by Jack Ford. For several decades, Mr. Ford has been visiting schools and service organizations to tell his amazing story. He continues to use these visits and speaking opportunities as a venue to condemn the proliferation of nuclear weapons and to advocate for world peace. By meticulously preserving his wartime memories, 
including his account of his presence at a world history-making event, Jack Ford had made a significant contribution to Newfoundland and Labrador's history. His courage and dedication have made him a role model for the youth of this province, and he will be forever remembered as one of our outstanding heroes. In addition, by rising above the horrors of his experience and devoting 60 years to volunteer work with the Masonic Order and the Royal Canadian Legion, he is one of our distinguished veterans and worthy to be honored by fellow Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Jack Ford. To receive the order, to receive the order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Mary Dyer Gordon. Born in St. John's, Mary Dyer Gordon is recognized internationally as an educator, social entrepreneur, best-selling author, <coughs> child advocate, and parenting expert who has created award-winning programs informed by the power of empathy. With a goal of changing the world child by child, in 1996 she founded Roots of Empathy, whose mission is to build caring, peaceful, and civil societies through the development of empathy in children and adults. The program has proven and documented successes in breaking cycles of violent and abusive behaviors. Teaching children emotional literacy and developing their capacity to take the perspective of others are key steps toward collaboration and civility. These are indispensable steps toward preventing aggressive and bullying behaviors and building mental well-being. The Roots of Empathy organization has helped Ms. Gordon achieve her vision of a society of compassionate and caring children who will pass on their legacy of empathy to their own children. Many children in Newfoundland and Labrador are fortunate to be a part of this very successful program. Roots of Empathy was first introduced in eight classrooms in the southwestern region of the province. Since then, the program has been delivered within communities from St. John's to Port of Basque, from Nain Labrador to the Buren Peninsula. Children in every province of Canada receive her program, and Roots of Empathy reaches to nine other countries on three continents. Mary Gordon is well respected and has been invited all over the globe to share her creative ideas on new and better ways to address persistent social problems. She has been the recipient of several prestigious awards for her ability to envision solutions and for having the entrepreneurial skills and determination required to bring her ideas to fruition. Ms. Gordon is also the founder of Canada's first and largest school-based parenting and family literacy center, which she initiated in 1981. These centers have become public policy in Ontario, with hundreds of schools involved. The Nelson Mandela Children's Foundation also brought Ms. Gordon to South Africa to share her early childhood parenting expertise. Mary Gordon speaks to and consults with government, educational organizations, and public institutions. She is a recipient of several prestigious awards recognizing her contribution to innovation in early childhood education and international social entrepreneurship, including the 2009 
Public Education Advocacy Award from the Canadian Teachers Federation. Her 2005 Canadian bestseller, Roots of Empathy, Changing the World Child by Child, was ranked as one of the top 100 books of the year by the Globe and Mail. She is a recipient of the Queen's Golden Jubilee Medal for her outstanding commitment to education and was most recently awarded the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal to receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Mary Dyer Gordon. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Constance Howley. Constance Howley, who was born in Montreal and moved to St. John's at the age of seven, graduated from St. Clair's Mercy Hospital in 1975 as a registered nurse. From 1975 to 1988, she worked as a staff nurse on medical, gerontology, gynecology, oncology, forensic and intensive care units in British Columbia, England, and St. John's. In 1988, Ms. Howley became a research nurse with Memorial University, assisting in research for HIV clinical trials through the Canadian Trials Network. This position started her on a career path that would impact the lives of hundreds of individuals affected by HIV AIDS in this province and abroad. Ms. Howley became a nurse coordinator of the HIV program in 1988, a time when there was an extraordinary amount of stigma and fear associated with the disease. Despite the discrimination she herself often faced because of her profession, she held the hands of those mourning the loss of spouses, partners, parents, children, and friends. Constance Howley played a pivotal role in the beginnings of what is now a provincial organization that provides a host of services to those living with and affected by HIV AIDS, as well as to the general public. As a healthcare professional and voice in the community, she helped develop prevention strategies that would ultimately assist in controlling the outbreak of HIV AIDS in the province in the early 90s. Ms. Howley also advocated for enhanced access to health care for those living in rural communities by establishing traveling clinics in areas such as Conception Bay North and Corner Brook. For this, she received the Healthcare Corporation of St. John's Purple Award for innovation. Her other accomplishments include several honors, including the Canadian Association of Nurses in HIV AIDS Care, the, Su the Jill Sullivan Award for Excellence in Clinical Practice in 2003. She's been invited to guest lecture at over 100 HIV AIDS presentations, as well as being a facilitator and consultant for various programs provincially, nationally, and internationally. She has also co-authored multiple scientific papers, presentations, and abstracts on HIV AIDS and immunology. In 2007, Ms. Howley took a 14-month leave of absence from the provincial HIV program to work as a nurse clinician in Southern Africa with OH Africa in Leribe, Lesotho, where she provided care and treatment to people living with HIV AIDS and consultation and education to local healthcare workers. In 2009, Constance resigned from her position within the HIV AIDS program and currently works as a nurse practitioner, primary health care in coastal Labrador communities. She continues to guest lecture on HIV AIDS issues. 
There is no doubt that Constance Howley's achievements in the areas of nursing and research are vast, but it is the direct impact she has had on the lives of people in this province that is immeasurable. Her compassion, leadership, and professional achievements have had a profound effect on countless lives. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Constance Howley. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Captain Sidney J. Hines. Captain Sidney J. Hines was born at Harbour Breton in 1955. At the age of 15, he left home to go to sea. He joined Marine Atlantic as an assistant steward, a company he would later serve as chairman of the board. This was the start of a remarkable career of contribution and commitment to Newfoundland and Labrador's marine industry. A quick study with a natural talent, Captain Hines quickly pursued qualification as a ship's officer. On receiving his master's home trade ticket, he became captain of an offshore supply ship. Following this achievement, he went on to command a wide range of vessels operating around the globe. Following the birth of his son in 1984, Captain Hines came ashore and joined Transport Canada as a mobile offshore drilling unit surveyor and examiner. From 1986 until late 2007, Captain Hines was president and CEO of Panship Limited. He built the company, which he helped found, into the largest Canadian-based fleet of deadweight tonnage, providing employment and opportunity for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. His marine expertise was further recognized with the appointment by the Canadian government as chairman of the Board of Marine Atlantic in 2000. Over the next four years, he managed the largest crown corporation in Atlantic Canada, achieving record traffic numbers and the highest customer and stakeholder satisfaction rate on record. In late 2007, Captain Hines took on new challenges after leading the consortium to take ownership of OceanX Inc., where he also serves as its executive chairman. Despite his great corporate success, Captain Hines has never forgotten his roots in the shipping industry. He has a clear desire for the betterment of workers. He introduced many policies and practices to ensure a fair and safe working environment for all. Captain Hines has been an industry leader and a visionary in the marine transportation sector for more than two decades. He has combined his professional and technical marine experience with strong business knowledge to develop private industry opportunities that have had enormous social and economic benefit to the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. Captain Hines has clearly demonstrated excellence and achievement as a marine industry leader who has brought significant social and economic benefit to our province. He continually inspires through outstanding vision leadership, and commitment. The value of his many accomplishments goes far beyond the important positions he holds and the important mandates he executes. His most impression rec impressive record of achievement reflects a true professionalism and the best personal qualities which have earned him the highest respect of all he has met. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Captain Sidney J. Hines.
to receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Susan Francis Williams. From her first vocation in the field of nursing to her term as the only female leader of the Labrador Inuit Association in its journey toward the signing of the Labrador Inuit Land Claims Agreement. From her pioneering leadership as an executive director of the Ocala Cadigan Society to her continuing willingness to provide emotional support to families impacted by suicide and sudden tragedies as a member of the named crisis response team. Susan Francis, or Fran Williams, has lived a life committed to supporting the health and identity of her community. <coughs> Born in 1944 to Amos Frieda and Verona Boas of Hopedale, Fran Williams learned early and hard lessons about the fragility of the way of life of the Labrador Inuit. As a result of tuberculosis, she spent much of her youth away from home seeking treatment. During those years away from home and family, she experienced the profound loss of her culture and language. As a result, every act of her life from that point on was guided by her desire to contribute to the health and culture of her people. So began a remarkable and selfless life of service. Not only did Ms. Williams graduate from high school, a rare occurrence for Inuit women at that time, but went on to complete nursing studies in 1967, the first Inuit nurse from her hometown. Within a year of graduation, she was posted at the International Grenfell Association's hospitals in St. Anthony, Northwest River, and eventually Happy Valley Goose Bay. After five years in the nursing field, Fran Williams realized that her mission was greater than ministering to the physical needs of her people. In her quest, she accepted a position with the Company of Young Canadians in Labrador. She became an Inuit education specialist for the Provincial Department of Adult Continuing Education and later became a liaison worker with the status of women. In 1980, Ms. Williams was elected as the first and only female president of the Labrador Inuit Association. Her four-year tenure saw important advances on the path toward Inuit self-government. It was her role as LIA president that made Ms. Williams realize that self-determination required a voice. With this in mind, she moved from the LIA to the newly formed Ocala Cadigate Society broadcaster, located in Nain. Known as the OK Society, the organization offers information and entertainment programming on radio and television in both Inuktitut and English. Ms. Williams has certainly played an integral role in the emergence of the Labrador Inuit as a confident people with a clear vision of the future. For her achievements in preserving and enhancing the language and culture of her people, and for the courageous role model she is for young women, Fran Williams is richly deserving of membership in the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Susan Francis Williams. The ceremony will conclude with an address by the Honorable Premier. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, Kathy Dunterdale. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It is my pleasure, and it really is my pleasure, and my privilege to be here today to participate in this wonderful event. 
The Order of Newfoundland and Labrador honors individuals who have demonstrated excellence, dedication, and achievement in a specific area of endeavor. It is an honor bestowed on those whose personal and professional contributions enrich the lives of others every day. Since 2004, 61 individuals have been inducted into the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. And each year, I have to tell you that I am struck profoundly by the selflessness, the perseverance, and the desire to improve the lives of others demonstrated by the inductees. And this year is certainly no different. To each of you, I offer my sincere congratulations on your induction into the order. From what we have all heard today, it is clear that while your areas of endeavor vary greatly, something you all have in common is a desire to make a difference. Renowned anthropologist Jane Goodall once said, what you do makes a difference. And you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. Each of you decided early on to make a difference and then dedicated your lives to doing so. And the beneficiaries of your decision are the countless individuals and families whose lives have been improved as a result of your dedication. Clearly, the impact your actions have had is vast and the difference you have made immeasurable. Ms. Cox's unwavering commitment to the early detection of colon cancer has made a profound difference to countless individuals and families impacted by this disease, including my own. Her ingenuity and perseverance has resulted in a provincial-wide cancer screening program, which today impacts the lives of over 700 individuals. Through his work in the visual arts, fiction, dramatic script, poetry, folklore, and children's literature, Mr. Daw has made an enduring impact upon the arts community and the thousands of aspiring artists who view him as a mentor and an inspiration, as well as to all who have been entertained, spellbound, and captivated by his artistry. Ms. Fowler's lifelong work in the areas of municipal governments where we first met and environmentalism has made a significant difference to the lives of the residents of Western Newfoundland. Her environmental scholarship has benefited numerous green-minded students, and her vast volunteerism continues to have a positive impact on her community. A wonderful woman who I've been privileged to know for almost 30 years. It's so good to see you again, and I'm so delighted to see you win this award, of which you're so deserving. Through his bravery and heroism during World War II and his dedication to using his story to promote world peace, Mr. Ford has a meaningful influence on many individuals, in particular school children who have heard and been moved by his message of peace and hope. At this time, please let me allow, uh, allow me a moment to wish Mr. Ford and his wife Margaret a happy 66th wedding anniversary, which they celebrated yesterday. <laughs> that, that their major achievements, two days in a row, 66 years uh, of marriage in the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. That, that's pretty impressive, both of them. Miss Gordon's commitment to changing the world, child by child, through the Roots of Empathy program has undoubtedly transformed countless families and in terms the lives of whom they touch. She is to be commended for her admirable goal of building a caring and peaceful society through the development of empathy in children and adults. And one of several prominent people from this province who contributed mightily uh, to our growth. I often think when I see your brother and your sister and what they do in our public lives, how proud your parents must be of all of you. A prominent figure 
in the HIV AIDS community, Ms. Howley's compassion has made an immense difference in the lives of individuals impacted by HIV AIDS and their families. Playing a pivotal role in the HIV AIDS community during the 1980s, Ms. Howley proudly held the hands of HIV AIDS patients, giving them a voice at a time when fear and uncertainty surrounded the disease. And that truly is real courage. It's easy to be on a popular bandwagon. It takes a lot of courage to stand in the face of prejudice and adversity and do the right thing. Congratulations, we're all so proud of you. Captain Hines' vast contributions to the marine industry and business environment in general has had a lasting effect on the lives of thousands of workers, as well as the countless recipients of his volunteerism and charity work. Captain Sid's name was a familiar one around my home as my late husband was a master mariner, and they crossed paths many, many times. He had enormous respect for Captain Hines and the work that he did and the opportunities that he created in Newfoundland and Labrador. Congratulations, sir. Ms. Williams' efforts to preserve and enhance the language and culture of the Inuit of Labrador has made a considerable difference in the lives of all she touched, especially young Inuit woman, women for whom she serves as a positive role model. And I became with, familiar with Ms. Williams' name and uh, the work that she did when I spent some years working for the Provincial Advisory Council on the status of women. And I knew of the enormous impact that she had in Aboriginal communities. But this woman had a positive influence on the lives of all women in Newfoundland and Labrador. And I'm so delighted to see you receive this award today. American philosopher William James once said, the great use of life is it to spend it for something that outlasts it. That statement is extremely applicable to each of you. Our communities, our people, and our province are better because of your lives, your passion, and your commitment. I am so pleased that as you join the group of worthy recipients of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, you and your remarkable contributions have been preserved as part of the great history of this amazing place we call home. Thank you so much. Thank you, Premier. Following this ceremony, their honors and the Premier will receive recipients and guests in the ballroom. You may exit this room by the front right-hand doorway. We're going to move the flag and open up the door in a few moments. I'd ask you at this time, please rise for the singing of the first and last verses of the Ode to Newfoundland. And remain standing for the departure of their honors, the Premier, and the newest members of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. Mm -hmm. 